This is the final setup. I have two machines running separately, each one on a separate graphic card. The Debian OS is running on the RX 550 and it runs KVM and Proxmox using the ready-made Proxmox OS and it has uh, multiple virtual machines for my free NAS storage and dockers for my smart home applications blue iris for my security cameras and the gaming and other general purpose machine for uh, which is Windows based uh, which has most of the power dedicated to it including the dedicated GPU GTX 1080 Ti okay so uh, this is the Windows machine which has the dedicated GPU and it also has a dedicated USB host controller where everything is connected to it the keyboard the mouse and the Bluetooth dongle so that I can connect the gamepad to it so I, I'll just try to open big picture mode okay. so, and I have uh, just for a uh, quick demonstration I have two keyboards and mice so uh, you can run uh, Synergy for example to control with a single keyboard and mouse or just by a KVM um, so you can see it's con it's running seamlessly on the gamepad and I'll just run any game just for demonstration so okay it's launching so I'll be uh, guiding in my next videos uh, step by st I'll be doing a step by step guide on how to do this setup completely um, uh, including the hardware installation of the Threadripper build and the software installation of Proxmox and all underlying virtual machines including the uh, Windows dedicated uh, GPU machine which is the hardest one to set up so I would like to thank the VFIO community and uh, Level 1 Tech Forum I followed a lot of guides from them and even uh, on Reddit I followed one uh, beginner guide on how to install VFIO I'll post the link to it how to uh, basically pass through your GPU this is the main guide so uh, just for demonstration purposes I'll start a quick game play locally anything? anything? ok All right, I'll be looking forward to see you on other videos where I'll be doing the, uh, I'll, I'll be demonstrating the setup guide step by step. So hello everyone, today I'm going to assemble a Threadripper build and I've chosen these parts which are uh, compared to the value that you're getting are very cheap. I've been scouring through two Reddit topics, uh, build the PC sales topic and uh, hardware swap topic and I've got my hands on very good deals uh, so I'll go through the parts first of all is the Vulcan uh, T-Force Vulcan RAM kit these are 3200 MHz RAM kits and they come in pairs so each pair was costing around $58 that's an amazing price compared to what was the price last year and then the GPU behind is a colorful Vulcan also uh, it's by coincidence the same name also in the GPU uh, it's a new brand but it's a very solid piece I'll be going through that piece and also there is the uh, Threadripper CPU so I'll open these two packets so first of all the colorful IGM GTX 1080 Ti GPU uh, I've managed to get it used for 1650 dirhams that's around maybe you can say around 450 dollars which is a very good price and the build quality of this GPU is quite good um, it's a triple fan type of CPU uh, GPU and uh, has all the ports you need, DisplayPort, HDMI, DVI, 
and there is a turbo button, but it's not of use. But I like the cooling uh, material. It's really well built, and it should last very long enough with this type of cooling around it. it should give some very good temps. And next is the Threadripper CPU. Okay. I've also got it from a hardware swap topic. So this is the Threadripper CPU. It's a used one. And it comes with an Aztec, uh, I think it's called an Aztec adapter. So that if you want to install a water cooler, you can use this Aztec adapter. But it's not recommended. It's not going to cover the whole C CPU for you. And uh, it comes with the usual uh, screwdriver that is specially made for Threadripper. It's actually using some standard uh, screws, but it's already built in, so it's more recommended to install your CPU using this screwdriver. Next is uh, a cooler from Cooler Master. So this cooler is quite cheap compared to all the other coolers. And so I did not mention the price of the CPU. It cost only $310. That's an amazing price. And the Threadripper, uh, the whole Threadripper platform, it's now very cheap compared to all the other CPUs and you get a lot of cores. Although not that much uh, uh, high performance cores compared to Intel, but uh, we are, we are not concerned about uh, like the strong cores against the number of cores because the goal here is to assemble a device that will be my KVM server and it's going to host all the virtual machines that I have to use as a home lab. So this cooler uh, is around only $37. So uh, it's like half the price of the cheapest cooler out there in the market and it's quite good uh, in cooling performance. I tried it before. It gives you around 55 degrees at high load, which is really good, maybe around 60 degrees max. So the rest of the parts, uh, the Astroc X399 Tai Chi. Um, it's one of the best boards and it is very well priced. It's supposed to be $320, but I got it used from eBay around uh, $210, which, really, which is a really good price. Um, the last two pieces are not used. And okay, before that, there was some deal on uh, Best Buy. So I've, got, I've managed to get my hands on a Samsung Evo 970 Pro, not Pro, I mean, Evo 970 Plus, which is a very good SSD uh, in performance. There is, if you search on Reddit, there is a, a user who is named by Newmax. He is the person who have collected all the specs of all SSDs and compared them. And he recommends this SSD at most, it's the most performant SSD. And uh, also the rating of terabytes written is very high. It's going to last very long. So this, I managed to get this SSD at only around uh, $142, which is very cheap compared to the normal price, $210. Okay, so I'll start assembling this build and um, the goal of this video, I'll just go through the build itself and assemble it. Uh, I'll be making more videos next to show you how to install Proxmox, which is my uh, favorite KVM OS, and uh, install all the virtual machines that you can use as a, uh, for your home lab. So I'm going to install a bunch of virtual machines for uh, smart home devices and for um, my the most important uh, storage OS, FreeNAS. I'm gonna uh, make it uh, one of the main virtual machines running over there. It's FreeBSD based OS. And it's going to uh, 
used as my local uh, network area storer it's, and uh, also I'm going to install other uh, operating systems like Debian and a couple of Windows operating systems one f as a server for to be used for Blue Iris which I'll be explaining later and another which will be used as a normal personal computer so I'll go through the build so the only two pieces which I didn't get used are the case and the power supply the power supply is not a very well known brand but it does what it has to do and it has enough juice 1050 watts and the case is a well known uh, brand deep cool it's starting to come uh, very uh, strong in the market and it has some very good uh, coolers already built in CF120 these coolers are compatible with all the motherboards whether ASRock or MSI or ASUS all the RGB controls that are coming straight out of the motherboard so I'll uh, start uh, installing the CPU into the motherboard the ASRock X399 type chip so I'll start by opening the box itself so I've got it used but uh, the seller said that he just used it for a month and he got some other board which suits more his build that's good for me so. let's see what's in the box so there are a pair of SATA cables and the Wi-Fi antennas manual SLI bridges IO shield SLI bridges and what is this? I think some other SLI bridges, but I think this is like dual and one, another one is quad and third one is trio. So I'm not gonna use any of them, just use the IO shield and no need the CD, only the antennas and the IO shield. motherboard itself it's very well packed thanks for the eBay seller Shape. So I'll just first install the CPU itself. So I'll use the Threadripper screwdriver. Uh, so there are numbers marked on the CPU socket. You have to, what does it say here? If you want to close, you close from 1, 2, 3. If you want to open, open 3, then 2, then 1. Oh. So I did it from first. On screw three, then two, then one. So it's spring loaded. Once you unscrew all the three screws, it opens up automatically. Uh, you just need to push on the blue pads, and it will also it's also spring loaded. It will come up automatically. You need to remove this cover. This is dummy, dummy cover to protect the pins. These pins are very sensitive. Be careful. Don't put your hands on them. And then install the thread ripper CPU. So when you buy your Threadripper CPU, it should come with this adapter already. So if it doesn't have this adapter, you cannot install it. So the way how you install it is uh, there is a marking a triangle here. This triangle 
it has to match the triangle on the socket itself. Uh, where is the triangle? Could not see it, the socket. There, where? Okay. Anyways, you have to just slide it in this way. Uh, the hand holder should be up here. Okay, so I'll just slide it in there. And make sure the bottom is clean. I just saw some dirt. I'll clean it off. So the bottom is now clean somehow. Okay. So you just slide it in that way and you close the uh, CPU socket. Okay. Uh, just want to make sure it's correctly installed. Pause the video to look for the triangle. So at last I found the triangle. It's on the socket itself. You can see this is a triangle. And it's aligned with the triangle on the CPU. So uh, I've surely installed it correctly. How to install the CPU after slotting it inside. So let's make sure it's completely slotted inside. And then close it down, flick it a bit, and then close the cover on top of it. And then it says to close number one, so screw in number one first. Last I was able to screw in the first screw side. Now number two, then number three. So at least all the threads are inside. Now I'll tighten them up. This screwdriver is designed in such a way that it will stop threading once it reached to the desired pressure. So once you thread in the CPU and you reach to the maximum torque, it will click here. It won't let you to uh, screw it much more inside. So now, since this CPU is used, you need to apply some alcohol on top of it to remove any remaining uh, thermal paste or any remaining uh, dust on top. I have some alcohol swabs, I'll just use them on the top of CPU, apply a little bit of it, and then we'll clean it up. So I'll clean it up with the tissue, yeah. so now the top of the CPU is clean, so now I'll we'll just unbox the CPU cooler. Uh, it, comes, it comes with a few tools to install the CPU cooler itself, the two bases, and then the CPU cooler itself, which is here, it has a very large 
base to cover all the thread ripples if you so you will also find some good quality thermal paste inside the box itself for the CPU cooler I actually have another uh, thermal paste kit but I'm not going to use it because this one is rated higher quality than the one that I currently have the one I currently have is from Corsair but it's not that much compared to this one this is much better it's called Master Gel Pro so if you look it up on the internet it has some very good numbers in terms of cooling so I saw some methods on the internet of applying the thermal paste the one that I like the most uh, is the X method so I'll apply it using the X method Another method that I like is to put one big blob and spread it, but uh, I just tested the X method, it's working just fine. And once you apply the cooler, you will see all the thermal paste is spread it evenly over the whole CPU. So I'll just remove some excess that I suspect it will come out to the uh, corners. I don't really need any um, thermal paste to come out to the corners of the CPU. I just want it to be applied on the uh, bottom of the CPU cooler itself. So I'll just remove this stick sticker. You can see it has uh, six heat pipes. Just to install the fan now. The fan should be uh, facing this way. So, compared to the motherboard, you can see the motherboard and the fan. You should install it in this orientation. Don't put it on the other way. So, don't worry if whenever you first install the CPU cooler, you will find that the temperatures are not that good. Uh, don't worry, uh, you just give it a one day only, and the uh, thermal paste will evenly spread under the cooler and liquidate with the heat until it spreads to the whole CPU. Uh, I think. I just need to install the basic. So the reason why I'm installing the cooler before putting the whole motherboard inside the case itself is that this uh, motherboard is very, uh, sorry, this CPU cooler is very hard to install inside the case. So it's much easier to install it outside the case first, then to install the motherboard inside along with the CPU cooler. I did one small mistake. I had to screw in the uh, base first and then install the CPU cooler. So it's not a problem. Already the thermal paste is going to take some time to spread out. And there's no worry to remove it and put it back inside. So I have to look for these screws. and install the base. I'll just remove the fan. It's a bit sticked due to the thermal paste. Okay. 
you can see it's evenly spread inside it's fine so what you need to do you need to install the screws inside so I'll pause the video and install the screws so be careful while installing the base of the fans uh, you can see the white part should be facing inwards so the white part should be facing this way so that can be installed in this way the uh, second part which is the uh, narrow part this part needs to be installed the other way just apply in the screw Install the second base. So now we put back in the CPU cooler. And now comes the tricky part. Now you have to screw in all the uh, screwdrivers over here. You have to screw them inside. And you have to use this. Uh, English small English key provided with it. This key. So it's very tricky. Try it with your finger first until it screws inside. All the four parts. So I tried to install for uh, before this motherboard uh, another thread paper build, but with the Asus Zenith Extreme, it was extremely hard to do it there was a heat sink blocking the way and it seems this is the style of all the Threadripper motherboards there is the VRM heat sink blocking the way to screw in the screwdriver for the Threadripper cooler I believe the only downside of this cooler it's very hard to install otherwise it's really good cooler Once they are at least threaded inside, just need to tighten them up to the end. They are spring loaded, so don't worry if you apply much pressure, you are not going to do any problems to the CPU. So I will be back once the screws are all tightened. So now I will just up, uh, open up the case and install the motherboard inside the case. But before that, uh, I can just test that all the components are working fine before installing them into the case. This will save me a lot of time. I'll just install the RAM, the VGA card, and the SSD, and connect up the motherboard to the power supply, and make sure that everything is working fine uh, before just installing it inside the case. Thankfully, this motherboard comes with the uh, M2 SSD screw, so I'll just use that to screw in the uh, Samsung Evo 970 Plus. Alright. So, uh, if I look at the labels, this is the first M2 slot. And I uh, like to install the first slot. I don't need to install the second or third one. Usually the first slot should be the fastest in case uh, there is a sacrifice on speed on the second or the third, third slot It won't be done in the first slot So, But you can always refer back to the motherboard manual for more details But uh, I didn't do that till now So I'm just installing the M2 SSD screw I need a smaller screwdriver. I'll just I'll try this one quickly. Let's see how it goes. I need a smaller screwdriver, but it's tight enough. I don't want to tighten it, tight it up more. So that's for the SSD. 
uh, now I'll install the GPU. So I'll put it into the first slot. up a lot of space it's even covering the second PCI Express slot it's a huge GPU I think it takes three slots but it's worth all the power so I'll unbox the power supply so uh, you don't see many people using this power supply it only cost me uh, 462 dirhams, including the taxes, and that's a very good price for a 1050 watt power supply. So if it works well, I would recommend it for all. And I saw some good reviews about it in Amazon UK. I don't think it's being sold in US. Maybe it's only targeted for uh, 220 volts and higher. supply that's a nice logo on the back okay so this is the power supply itself it's relatively small but quite heavy so this is the power supply it looks too flashy so uh, I'm going to use this 8 pin CPU into the motherboard and what's else in there the 24 pin SATA I'm not going to use for now so it's a semi modular power supply the uh, primary power cables are there secondary ones are pluggable you can use what you want out of there and it's a smart and budget wise design it's good so i need a second cpu cable one is not enough and it comes with plenty of cables so it comes with uh, one extra CPU cable and I th believe these are two PCI Express cables for the GPU let me open them up so the blue one was marked for the CPU I'll use it for the extra pin in the motherboard and the extra two are for the GPU so they are both 8 pins which is good so 1 into 2 that's plenty for 2 graphic cards set up high end graphic cards this is the second wire and I believe if you want a third graphic card third high end graphic card you can always use an adapter for the rest of the slots to connect them maybe into a 6 pin I don't think you can go all the way to an ATTI it needs 8 plus 8 so maybe you'll find something in 6 plus 6 which will work out fine for you so those are the rest of the cables SATA cables more SATA cables more SATA cables I believe they are total 9 Some of them are Molex also. So I just installed the power supply into the motherboard. To test that everything is working out fine. So 
Additional four pin go that way. That way. Mm. There's a weird design about the motherboard. You can see there are four pins this way and another four pins all the way out here, which is quite far actually. So I don't know how to split this cable into two. Let's see how it goes. So I'll just pause to connect the rest of the small wires to start testing out. I discovered that uh, the one on the side here is a 6 pin and the other one is a 4 pin. So I can use that 4 pin with the CPU, maybe the 6 pin with the PCI Express connector. So here it says that the extra 6 pin graphics power connector is only to be used when you need to install 4 graphic cards. So I didn't need to do that now. So, uh, so I didn't get any enough uh, clear information over the internet but from what I see from this power supply you can actually install three graphic cards so each one can be connected to one high-end graphic card which uh, splits into two so you can connect three graphic cards and the rest are for the SATA cables and uh, this means that this is a really good power supply it's 1050 watts and if you calculate up the numbers um, this uh, graphic card can consume in normal conditions on a high load uh, 250 watts so if you have three it's like 750 watts and the CPU may be 200 watts so 950 950 watts and you have a hundred more watts for the rest of the fans and stuff which is good yeah, for a Threadripper build power up the setup at my desk and see if it's working fine so that I install it inside the uh, case itself. I've noticed something the power supply does not come with the third uh, PCI Express cable so if you want to connect three you have to purchase a third cable yourself. The rest of the cables are included so, uh, so I connected the power supply then things, things seem to be working fine so I'll just connect the graphic card to the LCD screen Two silly things I missed out. First, uh, the RAM. You need to install the RAM. And the CPU, I just connected the cooler right now. So I'll just install the RAM now. So usually for quad channel, you need to install alternate channels on each side. So I'll check the manual and install them properly. There's a page that exactly mentions how it needs to be installed for the four channel, which is in the middle. So I'll follow that. So now I've installed the RAM and the CPU fan. I'll test out the setup outside the case. Let's see how it goes. This is the first boot up. Hopefully it works fine. I'll troubleshoot it. It's showing me 0C or C0. I'll check what's that issue and come back. started working, but I'm facing an issue. If I install more than one RAM slot, it gives an error. C0, I think. So uh, I've read it up, this error, and I thought, I think that it's something related to compatibility of the RAM. And I'll have to update the BIOS to make it uh, compatible to the latest version. So, I'll do that right now and let's see how it goes but at least it's booting up now with one RAM and using the graphics card I'm going to install the latest BIOS update you can see it has to do something with uh, some memory 
uh, optimization that has been done to it so we'll install it download it and install it now to the mother so i've downloaded the bios to a usb flash drive and connected it to the motherboard and connected the keyboard so that i can go into bios menu using f2 and went to in to instant flash and oh, it didn't find it i think i have to rename the file in the file to creative.rom let's see it's not able to detect the file okay there is another tool using uh, DHCP so let's try it maybe it's much more easier to do I'll try the other option I just connected the LAN cable it should pick up the IP automatically it says DHCP so let's see will it be able to update over the internet And that's strange no firmware update so what's the firmware version right now can determine the version I'll find it out and found out that the bias version was very old and I had to download first version 2.3 to update from 2.0 and then I can update it to the latest 3.8 so it found the first bias file 2.3 you want to update yes after this update I will be able to install also 3.8 the latest bios update and hopefully this will make it work with all the RAM modules so the BIOS is updated successfully to version 2.3 now I can update it to 3.8 so it found the version 3.8 I will update to it now so the BIOS is updated now I'll shut down the machine and install all the memory modules together so I've installed all the four RAM slots, it should be working now. Earlier it used to show error C0. Hopefully now it works. We will try to enter the BIOS if it opens. Yeah, it seems to be working now. Let's see, are all the RAM slots identified? Yes, total 32 GB. That's great. One last thing to check before installing this motherboard inside the case. Uh, I've just connected the RGB LED uh, connectors from the Cooler Master Fan. There are it's there is like a Y cable from two cables, two RGB cables into one, and then that Y cable goes into the first RGB input in here and it is a 12 volt RGB cable okay 12, 12 the um, LEDs in the fan are uh, of 12 volt, 12 volt type there, there is another type which is 5 volt so you need to be careful sometimes if you or uh, that's a known fact if you connect the 5 volt into the 12 volt motherboard uh, pin headers then um, I'm not sure either your motherboard or your fan LEDs will fry and you need to avoid that okay and uh, this motherboard uh, it has two RGB headers and both of them are 12 volts 
I'm not sure if there is more. I didn't check the manual, but the ones that I could see is two only. Uh, that's very good. Like most of the RGB equipment is 12 volt. Uh, so I'll just connect the power. Turn it on. Just I want to make sure that the RGB fans uh, are working properly. Yeah, so it's working properly. I'll just shut it down and start installing the motherboard and all the equipment inside the case. So now I'll be unboxing the case. This is a good quality case from a brand which is starting to be well known and the price is very reasonable. So I think in the beginning of the video I mentioned it costs around 420 dirhams with the tax. Uh, the good thing about this case is uh, it supports all sizes of the motherboards whether from ITX up to the level of uh, EATX so ATX and EATX which is the most important sizes for building a workstation both are supported and the uh, ASRock X399 Tai Chi it is actually uh, ATX, it's not EATX but more room is better for a uh, strip ripper build because it will uh, involve a lot of parts inside especially the cooling it has, needs to have some enough space so the clearance uh, written on this case was 170 millimeters and this fan is around 165 millimeters so the clearance is enough for installing this fan so I'll be unboxing this case now uh, I think I should have done it from the other side but Never mind. Uh, my advice was to do it from the other side, it's better. This case has a lot of uh, glass parts. I'm not recommended to unbox it this way. Either way is down or top, it will be just fine. And I'm sure since this case is almost half of it is glass, it will be well protected and packed. Especially it's from a well known company. So, this case. Uh, okay, so the only downside of this case. Uh, it only has two 3.5 inch drives uh, but you cannot find a beautiful case and a compact size case like this one and it will have more than two 3.5 inch drives my other builds were uh, there was the Z Asus, Asus Zenith Extreme uh, it was installed inside an N1707 case. That one had, had eight uh, drive base. That will be a great option for creating your own network area storage solution. But this case is uh, moderate. It has both beauty and power. Okay, so we'll just remove these screws on the side and carefully remove the glass uh, cover okay now there's another part here I have to remove the bottom glass just because I need to install the power supply and I don't want to screw up the glass so everything is fine the glass pieces are all safe Nothing is damaged. That's good. Okay. It's a good sign to start. So, what we are going to do. So, the fan is extremely hard to install inside the case. I had to tighten all these screws, and it was very hard to tighten the screws, especially with the 
aluminum heat sink on the front of it. So, uh, you just install the fan and remove everything extra like those Wi Fi antennas. Keep the IO shield clear. And remove the graphics card. So, this graphic card is huge. It took three, almost takes three PCI Express locations, although the header is only two. But uh, it, all, it already occupied the second PCI Express slot. I guess this is the only downside of this card. But the cool, cooling on this card is awesome. It maintains below 70 degrees for a very long time under uh, stress test of Fermag. So I'll try to remove this card. So strangely, strangely the appearance between the graphic card and the fan is much better on the Pi Chi than the uh, Asus Zenith Extreme. I didn't try the Zenith Extreme Alpha, but uh, the Zenith Extreme was having a very low clearance space between the fan, cooler fan, and the PCI Express slot, the first PCI Express slot. So in the other world, I installed it on the third PCI Express slot since it's also a 16X. So, having a bit of difficulty in that. So I'll just try something safe, maybe a pen. Don't use the knife. Okay, now it's free to go. Remove the card. Remove the power. And remove the uh, 24 pin power, power connection. Power plug. The 8 pin power plug on the side. And the 4 pin power plug on the side of two. Good thing that the RGB cable is still in place and the fan cable is still in place. Okay, so I'll be, I'll be doing the cable management later. But now we have to just put in the board inside. The good thing is it seems that all the base screws are pre installed. So we don't need. You don't have any headache in installing them yourself. Alright. But the question is are all the base screws matching the base screws on the motherboard or not? Let's see. So, one, ah, some of them are missing. So. I'll pause this video to install the rest of the base screws and I'll be back installing the rest of the hardware. So I was looking for the screws back. Where are they? They are actually on the other side of the case. I need to remove this side of the case just like the glass side. But this one is metal. And it doesn't make sense to keep it as a glass, the other side. But you just you really need to hide all these cables, so why would you? Uh, that's a good thing from uh, Big Food. So they included a lot of uh, zip ties for cable management. That's a good good gesture from them. And the screw pack is there. It doesn't seem huge, but it has a lot of screws inside. So I'll be installing the rest of the base screws and then I'll be back. So I've got this extremely useful screw, base screw adapter, this one. So I basically just uh, put the base screw inside and then I can tighten it up uh, this way. This is an extremely useful uh, adapter. I by coincidence got it from one of the computer shops. So I'll start to install the motherboard inside. 
unfortunately it was only one missing base screw in here so let's start putting this baby in so uh, this motherboard doesn't have the IO shield built in unlike some very new uh, motherboards even, even the SS Zenith Extreme had that built in so I have to look for the IO shield and install it inside first okay now we install the IO shield on the side so okay so it's this way I guess I'll flip it to be much more clear this side. Okay, so the IO shield is all in now. I'm going to install the board now. Very annoying. Okay, so here to go. Never ever lift the heatsink itself. Try from the sides. Once very long ago, but this is not a this is an LGA type CPU, it's not like a pin CPU. Some very long time ago, someone lifted the heatsink to lift the motherboard itself, and uh, it all came, the, the CPU came out, and some pins were bent. So, never ever lift mainly from here. Maybe you can use it as a support, fine. But don't lift the whole motherboard from the heatsink. Okay, like what I'm doing now. Okay. Strangely, the pins are not. The ports are not very aligned. Mm -hmm. I think it needs a bit of push from some of the sides. Yes, this seems fine. Okay, and the uh, ports also seems fine. Okay, now to install the motherboard screws. Not sure which one is which. My best bet is. Those small ones in here. Okay, let's try one. Yeah, these screws are just fine. Okay, let's do the rest. more like it okay now oh. 
this was the missing base the screw had a missing base so it was installed So this case has also two extra 2.5 inch drive mounts in here but in my opinion um, yeah no that that just forget about it no if the drive cage was a bit bigger in here you couldn't have installed a graphic card with a long base so uh, you will need a bigger case if you need more cages Maybe you can install some drives this side. It'll take some hacking skills to do it. Maybe 3D printing can help. 3D print a 3.5 inch cage here and install it. Maybe you can do that. So how many screws are left? One in here. I think I should have installed the power supply first, but there is enough space for it. I need to put it from the other side. Okay, and I don't think they designed the case in a way where you have to remove the motherboard to change the power supply. I don't think any manufacturer would do that. Okay. driver magnet is not that powerful so what is this port i think it's a u2 port but uh, there are too many ports here eight SATA ports two u2 ports such a good motherboard actually okay one more here Tricky. Okay, now everything, all the screws are installed. Time for the GPU and the rest of the parts. Okay, now for the GPU. So I'm going to remove the two I.O. shields in the back. It's very hard to do that, so I think I have to remove the cover, shield cover on top. Yeah, now all these are easily accessible. That one screw which seems to be a bit bent out of the box. If I hold one shield, this is the second shield. Okay, now I'll install the GPU. Not sure which one is 16x, but usually the first one is always 16x. 
the second or the third one is 16x it's better to install it that side so that it keeps some space between the CPU and the GPU in fact I'll just check the manual now so this is the correct page in the manual it says a single graphic card has to be on PCIe 1 so it seems not recommended to put the first graphic card in PCIe 2, 4 or 5 uh, if you have 2 then the first and the fourth 3 uh, so the first and the fourth PCI Express slot is both uh, 16x and the second and the last PCI Express slot are 8x so, so I've just shown the manual for the PCI Express slot uh, definition so first one is 16x second one is 8x third one which is number four because there's one in the middle it's not a GPU PCI Express slot so the third or fourth one is uh, 8x no, sorry 16x and the last one is uh, 8x so I'll just install the second one a second graphic card for the purpose of using it as a console GPU until all the virtual machines are set up in Proxmox and then I'll just remove it all right so I'll start by installing the GPU first the sorry the PSU the power supply slide it in from the other side so I got this EMX power supply it's a very good value power supply so I put the fan in the bottom or should I put it in the top I don't think I can do it and I just want there is actually a ventilation space in the bottom, so I'll just put the fan in the bottom. So just sliding it inside. It's a, bit, it's a bit tight. Is it interfering with anything? No. Okay. Again. not the best way to install a power supply here I don't know why they made it so tight anyways I'll just continue so it's all done so I'll put in the screws
PSU is installed just have to do a bit of cable management while installing the wires so I'll start by the second CPU power, power cable that's free top in the back ok so it's gonna go in from here and then I'll connect it back here Keep on. Okay, that's the first cable connected. Four pin power cable. Best way to enter from the side. Molex, no, Molex is not included. This 8 pin CPU or okay, so it's better to make it in the from here. Sounds not like the best way to. Cable management, but I'll try to do that later with some zip ties. Okay. Now the GPU power cables. Best way to enter from here. Back here. Then connect them here. Okay. Now just uh, put in back the review shield screws. I should have done it earlier, but never mind. Now tight. Okay, I'll try to do 
with some small trigger management. But I'll leave that to the end. And maybe I'll just put the cables for the hard disk drive inside here. So once hard drives are installed, you can just use the cables. Okay. Now the worst part is to install these tricky cables. need a set of power. What is this for? Unplug the connector if you use the motherboard to control the lighting. Okay, so I don't need it. I need the USB 3. Let me disconnect that. I think it's better to pass it from the bottom. And where is the USB 3? Okay. I'm just Yeah, now I'll connect this, this is the USB 3 connector here. I'll connect it here to the motherboard. Okay. Audio cable. It's better to leave the audio cable to the end, but it's a bit problematic, but uh, I'll just install it now. the audio there are two actually so I'll connect it to HD audio one Okay, now the worst cables, the power, hard disk light, and the reset switch. And they should enter from here. Or not from here. Should have been from the other side. Plus minus. Or the plus. Maybe. Let's see. Switch. Power button. Set switch. Touch the LED. There's no reset switch. Since there's no reset switch. Okay, touch the DLED. I'll double 
Sí, pues de Manny Mouse, ok. So one uh, with all the main parts installed, I'll just test the PC for the first time. Just to make sure there is nothing wrong in the installation. And it seems to be working fine. Now I'll install the rest of the parts like the second GPU and uh, Whatever cable management required, I'll complete that. And the LEDs and for the fans, the front fans. So apparently I have to do some modifications to the wirings because this will not work out if I want to put the glass plate back again. Uh, what I need to do, I need to remove all these wires obstructing the glass. Um, that's it, I think. The power wires doesn't have any issues. Only the USB three, so probably I'll just remove this. Reroute it again. Okay. I'll pause it. So after putting back the glass. Um, it's more clear how to reroute the wires. They need, either need to come from here or from here, but I, I don't see any need to put any wires from here. So the wires should be all distributed from these uh, hatches. And I should not reroute any wire from this side. So I'll rewire it again now. I've connected the fans and LEDs and the case certainly looks pretty but i faced one issue only is that uh, the rgb led uh, fans are not the ones that are sold separately usually when you buy a pack of deep cool fans they come with a controllable rgb led 12 volt uh, rgb led headers but these ones come with 5 volt headers so in the ASRock X399, there is no 5 volt headers. There's only two 12 volt headers, and certainly you don't need to try to connect that. Even with the adapter that came here with the case, so certainly don't try that. If you just take a look at the wire labels, yeah. So uh, the wire labels say it's 5 volt. So never try that on a 12 volt motherboard. And uh, well, there are only some LED uh, controls from this side. So you can just click here and it will change the colors from this button over here. And that's enough. Just Turn it back to the somehow rainbow LED. Yeah. Some nice effects are there. Okay. So now I'll uh, do some cable management in the back. Uh, it doesn't look pretty now. There are many cables all around. So I'll do some cable management and close up the case so that I can proceed with installing uh, Proxmox and do all the virtualizations on this machine. So I'll just peel the sticker off, there's no need for it. Never leave a sticker inside because these can stick with the uh, high temperature. Uh, there's another sticker over there for the motherboard itself. Just trying to remove it since this is a used motherboard, so it's sticking 
quite well, I think. It was exposed to some temperatures. Okay, so it's removed. It was over here. Okay. So I'm temporarily going to use this card. This is the RX 550. Um, it's the best mm, low powered card to use. Uh, it's either this or the GTX 1030. Um, but the GTX 1030 it's, it costs a lot and this performs better. Plus, uh, I don't have to do a lot of complex configurations to exclude the GTX 1030 from the uh, or to sorry to exclude the 1080 Ti from the uh, hard from the hard bare metal OS. Um, since this is AMD an AMD graphic card, and the other graphic card, the GTX 1080 Ti, is an NVIDIA graphic card, so I can simply just disable the the NVIDIA drivers from the whole OS instead of disabling a specific card and that is very easy to do and we'll see it in the next video so I'll install this temporarily set up Proxmox everything and then I can remove it later on now it's done so I'll keep this card in here uh, <clears throat> there are two possible uses either you just set it up once and remove it or you can keep it all the time and install uh, some UI like Genome for the host OS, which is DBM based. Proxmox OS is DBM based. And you can use two parallel OSs together the, <coughs> the bare metal OS, the Proxmox uh, based, uh, DBM based OS. You can use it with the RX 550. And the GTX 1080 Ti, you can use it with the uh, Windows or any virtual machine OS in, uh, lying under the uh, bare metal uh, machine, the Proxmox machine. Cable management is done now. Um, it's not that much tidy, but uh, I've left some space for maybe reusing some of the wires in the future so that you can add some fans. Uh, I didn't put it too strict, um, otherwise, it'll be uh, you'll have to just cut the uh, zip ties and reattach them again if it was too strict. So I'll close up the case and start installing the uh, OS. This is the final machine after the assembly. I decided to move back the GPU to next to the CPU so that it can have more headroom for cooling instead of putting it on the uh, third PCI Express slot. And it looks very good. Uh, Matrix 70 is certainly a good looking case. It's not so bulky, it's uh, somehow elegant. Thank you for watching this video.